Thank you. Very good. Hopefully this uh, clicker is not as temperamental. Anyway, glad to be here. Again, Mauricio Sanchez. I've, I've been a networking geek my entire career. I actually started off uh, with HP, low-level ASIC design, software design, and I've worked my way up to stack. And so now here I am as, uh, as one of the, uh, the, the part of the CTO's office leading the charge on uh, software-defined networking. So there are three questions I'd like to answer this morning. First is, what is software-defined networking not? Right? There's a lot of myths out there, and I start, I, I'd like to start debunking some of those, because from an HP perspective, there's a couple of things that are starting to, to settle into the, into the landscape that we'd like to stop. Secondarily, the second question is, well, what is software-defined networking to, to HP? What does it mean to an HP networking solution? And so I want to get a little bit into that. And lastly, I want to uh, answer the question, so what is HP doing around this? So what exactly can, can, uh, can we point to in terms of actual tangible proof points uh, around software-defined networking. So with that, let me uh, jump into, into the, uh, the deck. Ah, that's a little temperamental. So again, what is SDN not? Let me start debunking and, and, uh, and have you understand the, the, a couple things that, that uh, we feel software-defined networking is not today. First, it's not about implementing network functions just in software or in virtual machines. So it's not limited just to the data center. It's not limited just to the confines of what many people are, are proposing it being, that it's just a, a data center virtualization technology. Secondarily, software-defined networking is not about just programmable proprietary APIs. So it's not about a new style of managing your network that is proprietary to the vendor that you're, you're contemplating. So we, I'll get to more about what this means from, from the HP perspective, but it definitely is not about proprietary technologies. And lastly, it's not about the end of hardware innovation. So we talked about software-defined networking in the context of software day in and day out. However, let's face it, the underlying substrate is still hardware at the end of the day, and there's still a massive of opportunity that we've identified in terms of how the hardware infrastructure will, will evolve and uh, opportunities for innovation. So with that, let me get to what does it mean for HP, from HP's perspective, for software-defined networking? Well, it's based on, on what we feel is a three-tier architecture. And so that's why I show up here, is the, the, the components that are part of an HP SDN uh, architecture. So first, you start with your, your infrastructure layer. So this is the, the actual hardware, the, whether it be the switches, the routers, the, the capability that, that today you consume from a networking perspective. And so from a software-defined networking pers uh, perspective, it's about having open standard programmatic interfaces to be able to expose interesting capabilities on that infrastructure. Above that is a new layer in the networking tiers. It's the control layer. It's about separating the control and data plane and being able to abstract the control of many devices from one particular point. And so it's the controller paradigm and being able to expose those network, network functionality using those open APIs. And on top of this, we get to then to the interesting domain, which is the application layer. So today, we've already started to see with uh, my other peers who presented before me, specific examples about what interesting things and, and applications could be enabled using this new SDN-based uh, architecture. And so for us, it's no different that this service abstraction uh, provides a new uh, level of capability to be able to provide a set of, of applications and use cases that uh, have never been seen before. And I'd like to point out one specific example later this uh, in the, in the uh, presentation. So moving on in terms of what exactly HP is doing from, from this three-tier architecture uh, around SDN, on the infrastructure layer, we are adding control and data plane programmability through OpenFlow. So we are one of the early innovators in OpenFlow. I myself started working with Stanford before it was even called OpenFlow. It was called Ethane, if you guys uh, are familiar with, it, with, it, with the technology. And so this started back in 2005, 2006 uh, within HP. And we've been an early adopter and advocate of OpenFlow. And so today, we have a massive amount of capability in, in our switches when it comes to OpenFlow. If you, we already have 15 million installed ports of OpenFlow-enabled uh, capability out in, in customer landscapes. On the control plane, 
It's about developing a, a uh, oh, this clicker is definitely temperamental. It's about creating this, this SDN controller and having this controller be exposed using pro programmable open APIs. And so this is a thrust that we're currently undertaking, is how to create a controller that has northbound open APIs that then uh, service applications, interesting service applications, whether it be in a data center or in the campus or in the WAN, can take advantage of this uh, open API-based controller in order to enable these new sets of, of services. And then on the application uh, level, it's about creating those new service applications that uh, are of great interest, whether it be to current use cases in the data center, whether it be network virtualization as one of the key use cases, or whether it be enable new business applications and new security applications, which is what is near and dear to me. And so in this context, what, what, uh, what we've been spearheading at HP are things like OpenStack and being able to do large-scale automation and orchestration across uh, large uh, networks. But let me get to a very specific example uh, around why SDN is so interesting uh, looking forward and the new level of capability that this new architecture and paradigm uh, bring to the table. So I uh, have one foot in the networking world and I have the other foot in the security world. So within security in HP, one of the crown jewels is tipping point. If you're into the security landscape, intrusion prevention services is one of those key tools that uh, customers leverage in order to be able to protect against network threats. So working together with the tipping point folks, we have already created a prototype. Uh, we announced this prototype last October at Interop. One of my Lighthouse, Lighthouse customers is, is HPO, so HPO has this particular application already deployed. But in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is bring security intelligence and capability into the entire network architecture. And so what we did is take a particular intelligence stream from tipping point, namely reputation services. So being able to, to have the, the uh, sites and IP addresses of nefarious sites throughout the internet, so botnets, spyware, malware sites, and be able to have that consumed within uh, the network architecture and the network solution using SDN as a technology foundation. And so in this particular example and, and application, what happens is that uh, we use OpenFlow in order to reprogram the entire network that's under the control of that controller to send the DNS frames or traffic to the controller for inspection. Because it, it so happens that you can detect about 90% of, of malware, botnet, spyware sites based on looking at the domain name as to where that traffic is destined. So using OpenFlow, we reprogram the hardware in order to send that traffic to the controller. And there, that controller has a relationship with the tipping point threat management center, so getting live feeds of security in terms of where the attacks, where those bad sites are, and be able to, to tell anytime someone, like in this example, goes to a nefarious site, in this example, pingserver.info, if you've got traffic going to that particular site, it's a bad day. It's, it's malware, it's botnet, it's, it's traffic that shouldn't be going to that particular destination on the internet. And so using this capability in the controller to, to, uh, to do a lookup on whether this particular destination is good or not, we're able to make an instantaneous real-time decision and say, okay, we've got a security issue uh, occurring, and so let's use OpenFlow to go back to the network and reprogram it and say, for this particular user, we're gonna block their access right down to where, where, wherever uh, on the edge of, of the network where this particular security uh, transgression occurred. And so we see this as just the tip of the iceberg in terms of where we could take this new SDN paradigm. And, and then we're in the process of commercializing this particular application and should be coming uh, out with it in, in the not too distant future. But let me wrap up, start wrapping up here in order to uh, give you a better perspective as to what are the exact things that we are doing within HP in order to, to establish ourselves as one of the early and continuing leaders in software-defined networking. So first, we are continuing to uh, drive on the SDN controller paradigm by developing our own controller. So we're creating a platform that enables a separation of control and data plane in order to be able to have that single point of control and abstraction for an enormous set of, of network devices. 
Secondarily, we are creating an application uh, suite. So it's not just about having the substrate, but it's also being able to have interesting applications and use cases enabled. And so today, I showed you the Sentinel security application as one example, but we're also working uh, with uh, other partners like CERN to create uh, what we call the virtual cloud network application. So it's about being able to have a repertoire of applications and use cases that you can take and directly drive into your environment and enable new capability that, that you had it before. Third, it's about continuing to drive on this open standard paradigm and strategy that we've embraced for many years. So on that front, it's about working with industry consortiums as well as open standards organizations to continue to drive uh, the definition and the clarity around APIs and protocols like OpenFlow. Fourth, it's continuing to move forward on enabling this programmability within the interface and the infrastructure itself. So as I mentioned, uh, we've, we've been an early adopter of OpenFlow and its predecessor, Ethane, for many years. And so today we can lay claim that we have 25 switch platforms that already have enterprise caliber OpenFlow uh, enablement. And so in that footprint of customers today, uh, you already have 15 million ports enabled with, with OpenFlow. And lastly, it's because we are HP, we have an enormous set of ser uh, services uh, wrapped around the entire technology suite. So helping people start from wherever they're at to get to the journey as to uh, where they need to go. So we've got a number of technologi technologists and architects ready to be uh, called and at your disposal to begin that journey of software-defined networking. So with that, let me hand it back, and uh, I thank you very much. <laughs>